Hello, um, it's episode two of uh, Jack Dewey's music show. Um, we're joined by Led by Lanterns today. Um, thank How's you. How's it going? Hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, how are you both doing anyway? Go on, Chris, I'll let you start. I'm, I'm good. It's Friday, you know. Um, obviously, we're, we're both working full-time jobs while doing this band, so it's nice to get to Friday <laughs> and have a weekend where we can just concentrate on some band stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been a bit, a bit of a busy week uh, for us, and we've been trying to keep on top with everything. But how are you, dude? You okay? Yeah, yeah, not too bad, mate. It's just like you say, working, working quite a lot now. And um, there's quite a lot of overtime. Yeah. So, um, doing that and uni work, but juggling this in between it. And just thank you for for coming on. Um, that, no, no, thanks for having us, dude. That yeah. leads perfectly into obviously you're saying about your, your full time jobs and stuff. Just just how does that affect you as a band? Do, do you find uh, you sometimes struggle to make new music in a time frame, or just just how does it affect you genuinely? Oh, massively, mate. Like, um, I mean, we're we're always trying to push ourselves to to like try and keep a, some sort of momentum with either single releases or videos or you know, any kind of content. Um, and it is definitely a challenge to, to balance the two. And it's, you know, Sean will send me a demo of a song and, and I'll be in work like all day. And then I'll have like some admin stuff to do for work. And then I might be able to listen to it. I've even got time to reply and say, that's great. Or that's crap. <laughs> and it's like, it, that just that, like, on top of each other, on top of each other, on top of each other with everything we're doing definitely slows it down, you know? Um, which is, I mean, I don't know if you've seen, we've launched this Lanterns Alliance thing to kind of help fund the band so that, I mean, eventually, I mean, it's not going to happen quick, but so that me and the guys can take some time away from work, you know, and be able to do that without suffering financially to, to sort of nail these deadlines better and keep the content coming faster. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I know quite a lot of bands have done some things like that. I know uh, a band my mum listens to, the Overtones, they did sort of something like that where you subscribed and you got behind the scene footage and things like that. Um, yeah. How long was that in the making for you guys to, to put that out? Was it something you just thought of quickly or was it was it an upcoming thing? <sighs> No, so um, we got inspired by While She Sleeps launching theirs. And obviously it has been done many times before that, but they did it in such a way that really appealed to, well, us, as well as what we thought, you know, our, our sort of, our fan base would also love the way it's set up and the way it's marketed and, and the kind of content that's in there matches exactly what we do anyway. Um, yeah. So I think they launched theirs in... I couldn't uh, September or something like that maybe and so we talked about doing it we talked could we do it um it takes a lot of time um to make all this stuff I mean me and Sean have yeah. put so much time into this haven't we Sean yeah so Chris actually um came to me with that idea he says uh, um so while she sleeps had started this um thing and it had I've never seen any other band do do anything like this like you said there's been a, a few other bands that have done it uh, and I wasn't sold on it straight away. Um, but the more I've thought about it and definitely now what, when it's out, I completely understand. I really honestly think that this could be the future of the music industry. I really, really do. Um, you know, let's face it, music's free now. Music is free. I know you pay for your subscription for um, Spotify, but if, if you're anything like me, like I've had my phone by, um, paid by, by my phone company for years. And so like, I, I know, I've never paid for Spotify. Um, so music's always been free. I mean, for, for me, as soon as Spotify came out, yes, Spotify do pay, but not enough to make it a job, but it doesn't mean the process can't be free. It can't, can't, you know, it doesn't mean the process has to be free. So that's what me and Chris started talking about doing, like the making of, you know, when we do a music video, what actually goes on behind the scenes when we do a music video or when we record a song, because um, uh, like I'll demo a song, I'll send it to Chris, Chris will record it himself um, and then we'll send it off to get mixed and mastered. And so there's a lot that we do that nobody else sees. And at the end result, it's just a free item. And, you know, that's cool. Everyone's like, if so, every, everyone's digging it, that's great. Only we can't do this on top of another job. So when Chris get, uh, came to me with this idea, I was like, oh, this is so all the first thing I thought was, 
extra work. This is going to be extra work. How are we going to do this? And, um, you know, after, after a while, I think, you know, Chris kind of ran with it. And the further Chris ran with it, I thought, hang on. No, he's definitely onto something. And we're into our first week of the Lanterns Alliance now. And I can already be, see it being something that's drastically going to change the course of this band for the better. Uh, we can, we'll have a lot more time. We're not there now, but we, but we will be. And we're definitely working on that. Yeah, I think I've been surprised by the amount of people that not only have joined, but have joined at the higher tiers. Yeah. Um, and that's the biggest help in the world. You know, it's it, it essentially like, like Sean said, it's, it's the process behind the, what we do, you know, not just the music, but the whole admin of, of the thing. And, and also the other, the other areas that we work in, you know, I work as a tour manager, sound engineer. It's, it's, it's something I, I know how to do, but it's hard for me to sit there and go, what I know has value to, to mm. someone who doesn't know that but that's what everyone else is doing you know if, if you're a, a market trader and you can sell a, a, a successful market trader you can sell a course on how to market trade but it's just about trying to go you know trying to believe that what what you have has value and i think in creating the content for this the, the process of doing that has made me realize actually you know and this does have value and the reactions we've had in this first week people saying oh my god that's so interesting can you dive deeper into this aspect or you know oh i didn't know that or you know can't wait for this video to come out you know and it's 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 really now made me and sean realize what we know and what we do is interesting to people who don't do it and does have value to those people you know and even i've got friends of mine have joined it uh, you know and because there's the whole supporting thing going on as well you know they know that it's directly supporting us which is the whole point of patreon it's like directly supporting the person that you that that, that you're you know you're pledging to and i think that there's this whole community built around that kind of support that that I didn't realize was as generous as it is. And, you know, even before we did this, we started streaming on Twitch just because of lockdown. We were just playing uh, Call of Duty one day and I saw on, um, the PlayStation obviously has a share button on the controller. I was like, what does that do? So I pushed it and it was like stream to YouTube or Twitch. So I was like, oh, we've got a YouTube channel. Let's, cause this is essentially the start of it all. We so we streamed to YouTube had about 30 people watching and, and it was really cool seeing the, com the the comments and stuff as we, it brought a whole new element of enjoyment to just playing games with your mates, you know? Yeah. And then we developed that and all got cameras involved. And I, you know, we upgraded the setup and made the stream look sleek and got like nice interactive things on there. And then we, we made Twitch affiliate and that meant that we could start having paying subscribers to the channel. And all you get when you subscribe to, our twitch channel essentially is you know the the label of you are a subscriber you get access to a little symbol next to your name and you can use like custom emotes and what over this past year of doing that we've realized you know people are paying for that and they're happy to you know even now we've released the lanterns alliance th there's a lot of people who have joined the lanterns alliance but still want to subscribe to the twitch you know, so they're, they're helping us in two different ways now. And I think that whole process of realizing how people can be generous on Twitch made me personally believe that this would be possible when I saw While She Sleeps is uh, Sleep Society. And I know this, we're nowhere near as big as that band. And, uh, you know, they've got a super dedicated fan base. And I, I, I thought, you know, can, can we do this? Are we just going to try and hype it up and it's just going to fall on its ass? But do you know what? No, not at all. It's, it's, uh, you know, we're getting a steady, um, uh, increase in, in members all the time. And it's, it's awesome. And it's, it's sort of the same kind of thing as that Twitch community, the generosity, uh, and, but, but this time around, they're getting a lot more back, you know, and it feels better for me to be, to, to, you know, accept these pledges because they're getting so much more back. You know? Yeah, literally, Chris, I have just posted a picture just before coming on this podcast. I just posted a picture on my Instagram. This says it all. Um, I took a picture with my computer because I got like this ring light there and all sorts. And I took a picture and put it on my story and somebody messaged saying, um, oh, we really appreciate how hard you're working for us. I'm like, mm. 
Wow. For, like, I know. We, we enjoy this. We, like, we enjoy podcasts. Like, I listen to a, a load of podcasts myself, you know. Um, we, we really love doing this sort of stuff. And it's only made us realize that we actually want to do this more and want to do this as a job. You know, it's not just being in a band. We actually really enjoy just making content and helping people as much as possible. So this this Lanterns Alliance isn't just a led by Lanterns thing. It's a it's a it's a band thing. We're trying to push the music industry as lo- as alongside while she sleeps in a better d- direction. If if that makes sense. Yeah, for mm. sure. And like you mentioned, it, it is a bold move because, and some some bands like yourself, you won't you won't mind me saying this, but you, you're not a massive band, so no. people, this can go horribly wrong. You you could yeah. the price m- much much high, and people are like. They want us to pay that. It's not going to happen. But it sounds like you've just got it bang on. And and like you say, it's just it's just a great feeling for you both. Yeah, I think I I think we were both very realistic from the start. Like I, I you know, I was in my mind. I don't know how what your day one goal was, Sean. But my day one goal, secretly, even though I don't think I ever said it, was twenty. And we got uh, twenty three. Was it on the first day? Or something like that and I and I was like oh my god we've actually and you know the the pledges the money adds up pretty quickly and you know yes we're giving um when someone joins they get physical a physical like supply drop bundle with yeah. with stuff in it that's cool but it also costs us money so yes at the moment with the number of people we've got maybe we're just paying that back um but it means that when we come around to the next month that's pretty much paid back you know and um hope and already the comments inside the alliance are so positive that i i think that most people will stick around you know i obviously realistically not everyone will probably stick around the entire time i know if i was subscribed to something like this i'd think oh i might take you know take one month off to subscribe to something else for a bit and then come back and you know because you're able to do that you can change your tiers you can go up and down you can you know end your subscription um and it's you know it's 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 realistic to think that's going to happen and but i do really think because of the comments we've been getting that most people are gonna stick with this um because they feel like they're getting more than more than they want you know yeah it's actually adding um it's adding monetary value to to the the things that we're doing, but it's also adding more, like if people are subscribing to uh, the Lanterns Alliance or, or, or any any patron really, um, the content that's inside there becomes more valuable to them. You know, they're just like, okay, this is like made for us. It's a bit more personal, which is why inside this Lanterns Alliance, um, we're doing a, a, a talk about mental health uh, in a way to kind of, so it's not all just music. It's like other things like that. We're gonna add loads of random things in there, but we're gonna have, uh, it's called Inner Demons. And we just, it's like um, the way that we do it is we do episodes episodes so it's like a little series of different things like chris will do how to tour manage episode one episode two um and uh i've just started one called inner demons and uh, we talk about our own mental health hoping just as an open discussion not any advice or anything but just hoping that maybe someone's going to take something from that because you do get the sense very quickly that people are really listening it's not like putting it out there it's like you're putting it in a specific place, which is exclusive to the people that are subscribed and they are really listening and we really appreciate that. So we want to make sure we get it right. And we want to make sure we help as much as possible as well. Yeah. There's, there's a different, there's a huge difference between getting something for free and paying for something. Like if your mate goes, here's a free ticket to see, you know, um, a band on Wednesday and it gets to Wednesday night and, and you're sat at home and you've got a cup of tea in your hand and you're like, Oh, do I have to go like, you know, <laughs> whereas if you paid 20 quid for that ticket, you're never going to sit at home and go, oh, this cup of tea is good. You, you, because the gig then has a, a monetary value to you. You've paid for it. And so you're going to pay attention to it more. And I, I feel like this whole community inside the Lanterns Alliance are so focused and, you know, really, really watching everything and then watching it more than once. I can see the stats. And they're, they're taking it in and asking questions. And it's like such a, you know, we put a song out on YouTube, um, at like a normal music video release. And it's like, okay, we get the views and it, um, but there's, you don't really know what anyone's thinking of it. And, you know, yeah. 
the, the ratio of comments to views is tiny. You know, you, you don't really get a good impression. Whereas it's the total opposite in, in, the, in the Lanterns Alliance. Like it, the first person to watch a video will write the biggest comment ever, like really asking questions and diving deep into what you just said. And that doesn't happen like in the normal outside internet, you know, because content's so disposable that, because it's free. So it's like this, this really created a different kind of attention yeah. that I think also makes us feel more valued, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely that value that's now lost in actual CD and heart. Like, you know, like when, when, you, when you go to the shop and buy a CD, it obviously means more to you. You'll probably listen to it 10 times more than what you do when you stream a song. It's just 100%. like that, it's that swipe culture thing going on. And obviously things, content is so disposable, like you say. And um, I think that things like Patreon now are just giving, giving, giving that sort of, feeling back yeah i think yeah yeah, yeah for sure uh, i think that's covered obviously the patreon side of things um, and yeah. we'll, we'll move on now to to the band itself um how was the band formed for people who who don't know or even some of your fans who might not know the little inside details how, how did it all come about um so the band originally had a, a different lineup sean played bass um, I play lead guitar and our friend Boots was the singer. Um, and we started, uh, it was me and Boots um, started it. Me and Boots both played in another band before called My Favourite Runner Up. And that band naturally came to an end. Um, and Boots really wanted to start a project because I was the singer in that band. Boots really wanted to start his own project after that where he was a singer because he really wanted to uh, dive into his mind with the lyrics and sing what he was writing um, and I basically didn't want to be in a band without him I'd, I'd been in a band with him for a few years then and I was like oh, I just he's so proactive and like before he joined the band it was like I was the only guy doing anything do you know what I mean so I didn't want him to leave me so I was like and also to be honest I've been singing in that band for like basically 10 years and I've had enough of being glued to a microphone. I really wanted to explore guitar a bit more. And um, so the idea was formed that me and him to, would stay together, but essentially swap positions and start led by lanterns. Um, we went through so many ideas of band names. And in the end, one of the main reasons we came to led by lanterns was because it wasn't taken, to be honest. We had so many good ideas and every single, there's so many bands in this world, Jack. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, you have got, until you try and find an original band name, you, you've got no idea. Like it's, there's so many bands and um, led by Lanson sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's signified, you know, that the, the strong emotions within you and, you know, being led by them essentially. And, uh, but more than that, it was because it was free <laughs> available to be taken. <laughs> and uh, so that's how it started. Um, our sound engineer for the old band lived uh, in the Midlands. Uh, me and Boots lived in, Ab well, near Aberystwyth in Wales. And we, we said, uh, when we start this new band, should we actually make a go of it? And we, we ran a recording studio at the time and, and the landlord kept putting the rent up and it was sort of like becoming a struggle. And we had to do all these stupid like hen parties and stag do's and ch uh, children being a pop star for a day and coming in. And that's not what we wanted to do, you know? You know, it was still fun and I enjoyed doing it, but not, it's not what, what we wanted to open a studio for. So we thought, right, let's jack this in and let's move to where our sound engineer lives uh, in, in the Midlands. And at the same time, we had a fill-in drummer called Brad who also knew our sound engineer and lived in the Midlands. And then uh, we needed a bass player and Brad knew Sean, uh, who lived just up the road. So it all kind of fell into place <laughs> as we moved to the Midlands. And then we moved into this closed down college um, as part of a guardianship scheme. So it's like a big old empty college building um, and the classrooms are our bedrooms. It was a great find. I found it on right move. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's brilliant because we've got like a big room set up as like a studio. We let bands crash there when there's touring actually happening and you can make as much noise as we want. And when I found it, no one else lived there. So I helped organize everyone who moved in. Yeah. And so everyone's music based. It's like a, a great place to be based. Uh, and then being introduced to Sean, it was like, Sean, do you want to join and play bass and move in to the college? And then Sean was like, yep. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> literally, I'm not gonna lie. They had they had one song uh, written when I first joined the band, and that was a song called Recovery. So anybody that's heard us probably heard that song because it did okay. It did okay. Um, but I had nothing to do with that song. Uh, so that song was pretty good, but the main reason I actually moved in was because they lived in a school. <laughs> like it's like the coolest thing ever. You, if if you if you need a piss in the middle of the night, you have to skateboard down the corridor to the toilet. I was like, this is this is what I want. Yeah. I want this room, and so that was the reason I joined. But then obviously, a couple of years down the line, Boots left, um, and then because I was writing songs before Boots had left, you know, I was me and Boots would write a lot of the lyrics together. And I was writing songs, I started to get a bit deeper with my lyrics. Yeah. Uh, but then I was the opposite to Boots, I kind of wanted to write deep songs about things that I was feeling, and Boots kind of just sing them and take that from me. But then he left. And like, I had to kind of just sing all, all these dark and meaningful songs, and everyone knew that it was me writing the lyrics. Um, so that's how I became the singer. And uh, so it's basically just been me and Chris for, for for a while, but obviously then we met Snake. Um, Snake, I, I've known, he, he lived around the area for a while. And um, so we got Snake in uh, on the White Flag tour with Normandy, uh, and he's kind of stuck with us ever since, thank God, because he's an absolute saint. Um, and then the most recent... Uh, the most recent member is Rob, the bass player, uh, and he's he's a creature of his own, to be quite honest. Uh, but we absolutely love him, and um, so that's where that's where we got to to to, to right now. Yeah, uh, you just mentioned Normandy. I'm, I'm sure you've listened to the new album that come out uh, today. If you have, yeah, um, yeah, favorite song from it. The my favorite band at the minute, apart from yourselves. <laughs> but uh, it's a, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, but favorite song off that album uh, Babylon's Mine 100% I know it, it I, yeah I know it was released and I'd kind of heard it a lot of the time when it was released but like I think that song is like it's 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 better than 99% of the things that I hear on a ra on radio at work you know and it that's so charty as well I know charty is not an actual term because everything is quite different now but that to me has so well, it has so much potential and it's fulfilled that because they, they're doing absolutely they're absolutely killing it right now aren't they yeah yeah and i think mine is that riff in um renegade yeah um <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. um, it's just a no skip album in my opinion i just think every song just it, well every song gets better but like i say it's just it's a no skip album and I feel like I'm not listening to an album like that since Slaves as to Better Days, which came out last oh, year. Yes. Great yeah. album. Uh, Great album. I just, I just think again that's one that covers all aspects. You've obviously yeah. got the slower song in footprints and um and yeah, it's just it's just another it just Well, you've got great taste in music, I'm telling you. Yeah, man. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, I like yeah. Yeah, I like how Normandy stuck atmosphere where they put it as well because I didn't know what order it was going to be in until until I saw it today, and it's totally not in the order I thought it was going to be in. But atmosphere is perfectly there; like it's like a little chill out in the middle, you know. Yeah, really yeah. good. Um, yeah, that that band are just so in front, aren't they? They're so in front with everything that they do there, and we t we draw a lot of inspiration from that band. And before we went on tour with them. Um, obviously even ne even now but like we, we've become friends with them now so it's like weird to say this but they are they have been one of my favorite bands for a long long time yeah um i think chris showed me uh normandy ages ago yeah, I think it was maybe because maybe you were working no 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 they, they so no? The, how i found out about them was they were on the yellow card tour and they oh. stayed at the college um, oh okay and they left a cd the ingers album and I didn't listen to it for ages because there's so many bands that stay all the time and we've just got like a massive stack of CDs from random bands. And I thought, oh, do you know what? Today is the day I go through some CDs. And it was like track one of, of I can't remember what the other bands, but I was like, it's all right. Next one, it's all right. And I put that in and I was like, oh my God. Like that, and it's weird when once you've met some people and they were so humble and they didn't big up their music or anything, they, you know, and they said, you know, would you like a CD and a t-shirt? Um, because you put us up for the night and 
when you put it, when, when you don't expect it, it's like when your mate goes, I play in a band and you just assume they're crap <laughs> <laughs> until you actually hear it. But it was kind of the same, you know, there's so many bands that stay at our place that, you know, it's because it, the kind of bands that need a place to crash for free are grassroots starting out. And a lot of them have terrible recordings. You know, it's how you'd start. Like that's every, you know, I was the same. And um, so I didn't expect it. It blew me away from the second I pushed play. And that's when I told you, Sean, I was like, you need to listen to this. Yeah. That I cannot believe how good this band is. And then um, they stayed a few more times after that. And that's how I stayed friends with them and then started um, mixing, mixing front of house for them. Um, and I really wanted to do it. And there was like three other guys that I knew who were sound engineers and they all really wanted to do it as well because not only are they a brilliant band, and the mm -hmm. songs are great and also their setup is great like their guitar tones live it's like kind of mixes itself almost you know it's uh, you can just enjoy it and focus on the tiny bits that polish the sound mm -hmm. unless you're in a crap room and then you just fight in the room the whole time but <laughs> it's i really wanted to mix them and i was like guys guys please i just finished this tour with with woes you remember you came to the uh, the roundhouse show on the yeah. state champs tour i just finished that that tour and i was like guys you're in london the next night i'm in london please let me launch and uh, please let me mix you and it was their album launch the um it was a white flag album launch yeah. and uh i was crapping myself i was <laughs> i just really wanted to make a good impression and luckily i had a great night and and that started a great relationship and a professional relationship between me and them as well and their management and uh it made us me and sean and the rest of us really good friends with them and it's it's why it's one of the reason why we got you know, to tour with them on the White Flag tour was because we were already mates and they could see that their fans would love our music. And, yeah. and there's definitely a crossover. They've definitely done a lot for us um, with yeah. just doing that, doing that, doing that tour, that White Flag tour that we did with them. That was, it was a really good, because that the first time I ever played, uh, sang for this band was in Hamburg, not, not Hamburg. Uh, Copenhagen. Copenhagen. And so, you know, I, I, we hadn't even done a gig in the UK yet as uh, with me singing. And so, you know, they really helped us get a good start, you know, with the new lineup. Great, guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm just going to put it out there. Philip Strand is my dream interview. So if you can get any tie sorted or hook me up. With him as an interview, then that that would be, be. I can cool. definitely, I can definitely send a message for you. <laughs> Obviously, I don't know, but I'll, I'll send a message for you after this if you want. <laughs> That'd be unbelievable. But no, um, it, it it's just like talking about them, and you speak speak so highly of them. Um, I'll, I'll t go to you first, Sean. Who who's your inspirations been as you've grown up, or even now? So I've listened to some weird, really strange music. Not necessarily strange music, but things that you wouldn't you wouldn't associate with this kind of music. Like what got me into music was Queen. Um, I remember my dad gave me a tape tape player and it had loads of old, old kind of music on there. And there was a lot of Queen on there. So, and then I remember watching a video. I don't know where, cause YouTube wasn't about then. Um, and I watched him act as a front man and I thought, wow. So I remember actually at my first ever show, I took the mic stand and I, I took it in half. Yeah, I, I, take, I took yes. the, the bottom half out and just held it. And I mean, I look at photos of me doing that now and I'm like, what was I doing? Like, there's only one Freddie Mercury. But, um, <laughs> you know, things like that and Aerosmith, I know they sound absolutely nothing like us. Um, but those are the kind of, you know, and then and then we kind of do go to like the Normandy, the Don Broco. I mean, Bring Me The Horizon are absolutely killing it now. I really like that sound. Like, I feel like um, Royal Blood kind of started that heavy riff royal blood kind of i think change because they've coming out with some new album uh, new music now royal blood and so it's just that heavy stuff that that so that was how i started with those kind of bands and then it filtered onto a lot of the newer stuff now mm. yeah and then and then yourself chris uh so until i was about 16 i was just into whatever was on the radio so i was like <laughs> westlife and n sync and all that stuff and then um linkin park released in the end and it blew me away i i couldn't believe that i was loving distorted guitars i just until that moment rock was like 
Uh, I, used to, I don't know what happened. And I remember I asked my brother, my brother's mate had a CD burner. Like one of the first people that, my, that I knew to have a CD burner. I was like, can you burn me that in the end on a CD, please? And he burnt me the whole Hybrid Theory album. So this is me totally admitting that, that I got into rock for an <laughs> illegally downloaded version. Um, but yeah, he burnt the whole Hybrid Theory album. And I remember listening to it and it's like, crawling in my skin. And I was like, oh, it's a bit much. But then over like a few listens, I was like, ah, do you know what? That's not too much. And it, it changed everything. And I went from there, I went, you know, obviously um, Limp Biscuit and Corn, and it was like proper new metal stage. And then at that, that time I met the drummer in my old band and he was like pop punk man. Like all of the, you know, um, something corporate and messed mm -hmm. and um, Goldfinger and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so we kind of just, me and him became like best mates and we took this musical journey together, combining the two. And that's when we fought, formed My Favourite Runner Up, it was all loosely based on that kind of style. It, went, it did go a bit more poppy, pop punk mm -hmm. eventually. Um, and then get, uh, the whole, the South Wales music scene happened. The Blackout, um, lost, lost profit. And um Let's not yeah. talk about that. Uh, Bullet for my Valentine. And just that happened. And from when that happened, it was riffs. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I became uh, in love with riffs. The Blackout. I just love how the, what the Blackout did. You know, cheesy as anything, like lyrically, but riffs. And I've never let go of that since. And obviously that, that took a big inspiration into how we write as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I've, I've literally just got a notification saying, we're back, part two, um, in part one we just spoke about the new patron you set up um spoke a bit on the normandy's new album and also inspirations but uh we'll, we'll just sort of talk about a dreaded topic covid and sort of how it's affected you as a band and sort of, do you find it's affected you in a, in a negative way that you've not been able to record as much music or like some bands are you finding you you're writing a lot more music now I would say the second for sure. Like the way yeah. we the way we record anyway was at home, mm -hmm. um, and this obviously with my job before this was touring, and um, I'd feel guilty a lot of the time because Sean would just be churning out these ideas, and and I'd be like, ah, oh, it's cool, man. I, I'm trying to get space in a dressing room to work on something, and I think. It's so much easier said than done to try and get a moment away on tour. Like you, you actually nailed it on that Waster tour, Sean, while you know, writing on the tour. But um, Sean was writing, sat on the stairs while other bands were sound checking with his, with his headphones in, somehow writing music while hugely loud noises were happening in the background. <laughs> and that ended up being down, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. Our latest single. And um, so you're definitely better at it than me, but... But no, this, um, although obviously with my work side of life, it took a huge negative um, hit. Um, it actually enabled me to give this a lot more time. I think, Sean, you had a few months off work as well, didn't you? In yeah. the, first, the first lockdown. And it, we really took um, a big step forward towards this album. Uh, and I don't think that this would have happened personally. I, I mean, I don't know, but I don't think this would have happened without that. Yeah. No, yeah, me neither. I don't see like what Chris said. It's we've we did a lot of write, writing music. We even uh, we even wrote a song about the situation that we were in. We all had to record our, our parts separately, send them to Chris. Chris mixed them all together. We even did a music video in our own house. Uh, we called it Fever. And, um, you know, and we, we managed to do things like that. So it's, it's, it's allowed us to be a lot more inventive. And I've, I'm seeing a lot of bands do that. Like, they're, you know, me and Chris, we're just constantly having to do something. Um, I think now with the Lanterns Alliance, we've got somewhere to go. But like even then, even before that, we started a podcast called um, Inside the Lantern. Uh, so we we still do that. And uh, that, that's obviously where the Twitch, I think it was more good than bad for this band, for the music industry, probably not so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally agree with that. I think it's given the little guys a bit more time to to focus on music, but the, the, bigger, the bigger guys, the bigger companies... Yeah. PA companies who are still, you know, paying finance off on these audio systems, you know, but no gigs to hire them out to. Uh, it's just destroyed. And venues with their ground rent, you know, no, no income. I think 
it's destroyed more of the music industry than it's helped, but it's definitely helped bands like us who, who, who all work second jobs anyway, um, it gave everyone a bit of time off to focus on their creative side. I think not even, ju- not even just musicians. I think any creatives in general yeah. have had a bit of a, a bit of a surge in this year, you know, which is funny because at the same time, it's taken away the ability to publicly show that creativity. So it, it's like, an intense closed down creativity. Obviously live online shows now have become an actual thing yeah. uh, and not a gimmick anymore. Mm-hmm. Like it's, you know, people genuinely look forward to online shows and, and you know, it's something we're considering doing um, for, for this album campaign as well. Uh, nothing confirmed yet, but um, I think it's enjoyable seeing how people are taking their creativity in a different, in a different direction. Like, online shows there's a there's obviously the performance aspect but then the way it's filmed is another creative aspect of it and you see i don't know how many live stream shows you've watched jack but some of them are so inventive you know i watched one um oh, who was it i can't remember but he he basically got out of a limousine and he started singing the song walking through the hotel into the little theater inside they played three songs in there then he walked out into an elevator got handed an acoustic guitar played an acoustic song as the elevator was going up came out onto the roof and the band were obviously it was filmed in different sections so the band could get on the roof and set up everything but then he walked out back to the band set up on the roof and then he went back down came out by the pool and they had a whole cat it's like that couldn't couldn't happen in a live show you know <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really like in a way it, all the creatives have like adapted i feel to this situation and a lot of people have suffered yes it's uh, it's horrible seeing a lot of my mates you know going bankrupt and stuff through their businesses but um for you know creatives on our level i think it, it i think it most people i speak to in bands like us it's helped definitely yeah. mm-hmm. you mentioned online shows a genuine I've, I've been to more online shows than they have actual concerts um, yeah I, the last one i watched was motionless in white um oh it, how was that yeah, sick it was good i mean they're always good I mean, you know chris motionless is just always puts on a show but yeah you know, it's, it's crazy because um, this year we've uh, hopefully going to see Normandy in October. Um, yeah. Slaves as well, which is on Halloween. Um, different genre, but if you know Scooter, the German techno rave band. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Bring me the horizon. So it's, it's hopefully a positive year and yeah, we'll see what happens. But just talking about concerts and touring, what is it about you, Sean, that you enjoy touring uh, or just doing gigs or what, what is it about you for yourself uh for me it's uh i actually get very very nervous it's uh it's not enjoyable until maybe a song in um for for at least a few songs uh, for a few, uh, at least a few shows um, shows into the tour so if we're on a tour or whatever um i didn't realize how much i missed it until I, until this, to be quite honest, I, I, at, at the time, you know, we had we had a tour booked, and obviously that fell through due to COVID. And when it did, I realised that was honestly where when I realised, oh, I actually miss everything about it. I thought I just loved the shows. I actually miss everything about it, and I feel like I've taken um, all the social settings I've been put into in this band life, should we say, mm-hmm. for granted. I've completely taken it for granted because, like you say, Chris, it was great. I wrote, <coughs> I was, I, I always write on tour. I find, I, I really enjoy it. Um, but I think when we go on a tour now, I, I think I would like to be a little bit more present. Yeah. Obviously, the journey's are long, which gives me a lot of time to either edit videos. And now we've got the Lanterns Alliance thing. We, we, we've been making content for that. But um, I just miss, I miss the, the atmosphere. I miss yeah i miss the people that that work in that in that environment as well and everybody's on like in a big family when you go on a tour a couple of shows in and everyone's like you know brothers and sisters there it's it's wicked yeah for sure Uh, the same question just for for you chris yeah it's um for me yeah the definitely the, the traveling the i know you don't get to see much of the of the city (laughs) you see the loading bay 
<laughs> you see the dressing room and <laughs> maybe you see the immediate one mile surrounding the venue, which, you know, the venues we play are usually in the worst part of, of cities. <laughs> but um, um, I miss that moment when, you know, both from, from play, the moment that I'm talking about when we're playing a show is right before we go on, we have an intro track that goes, the lights go down and we get, I get that surge and everyone screams and it's like, that feeling is unbeatable. And I get a very similar feeling when mixing a band and I'm the guy who, go, who with the lighting engineer goes, three, two, one, blackout. And you pull the, the house music down, the lights go off. Yeah. Same feeling happens there. It's like, you feel what everybody's feeling in the room and the excitement, the anticipation for what is about to happen. And I don't, I can't think of anything in my life that gives me that feeling other than that. Yeah. And I, honestly, I cannot wait for the first show that I work, the first show that we play. And I agree with Sean, I'm never taking any of those moments for granted ever again, yeah. definitely. You mentioned that, that, that feeling. I know I'm not in a band, but I can say, certainly say that it's weird i get the feeling if you know the song faithless insomnia uh it's yeah. just that little dramatic little bit and i get these so many images in my head like if i was a professional boxer that would be the song that i come out to and everyone's just going crazy and it's just, yeah it's just little feelings like that that you mentioned that just, yeah. just drive you forward and, and make you do what you want to do but um a different question you talk about the fans and stuff if, if you ever had any weird fan experiences Okay, um, it's going to take us a while to t uh, to think of one that we can actually say. <laughs> um, I remember, okay, because it, it ties on really nicely with what Chris said. Um, so that feeling just before you go on stage, um, sometimes the lights go down, the intro track starts, and um, you hear the crowd not go absolutely mental, especially if you're not the headliner, right? But this one show, they went absolutely berserk. They the lights went down, our intro track started, and the crowd just went insane. Me and Chris were at, at, around the back and we looked at each other and was like, oh my God. Yeah, we couldn't see it from where we were. We were behind the back of the stage, so you could just hear it. Yeah, and it, it did us a favor because I'll tell you what actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> we played, this was in Cardiff and we played a show and everyone was absolutely loving it. Like it was one of the best shows. I think that's one of our, our favorite shows, isn't it, in Cardiff? 100%. Everyone was just going absolutely mental, you know, um, like everyone was mosh pitting. I mean, mosh pits make me a little bit nervous, but when I see people picking each other up, it makes me feel a lot better. Uh, and there was a lot of that going on. Um, and then at the end of the show, we realized that the reason why they were going mad was because our drummer had actually fallen onto the stage, getting onto the stage. So <laughs> our drummer comes out first and he just literally just fell behind his drum kit and everyone was going, way like that. And we thought it was for us. <laughs> oh, no. um, but I mean, I guess that was a, a weird band experience uh, uh, in terms of a fan experience. Have you got anything, Chris? There's nothing. There's no, no, no moment in particular. I think it's definitely a relationship that you have to get used to. Um, you know, you, you, you can't, there's, there's a, there's a moment where you, you can't invite them all around your house for a cup of tea. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time you want to, you feel like, yeah. you feel like you're getting to know these people, especially, you know, I, I call them friends, you know, our fans who follow mm. tours, tours, you know, um, just to see us play. You know, we got a, a, f a few fans in Germany who've flown over just to watch us play a 100 cap room in Birmingham. Yeah. You know, and it's, and they flew straight back. It's yeah. honestly incredible. And I, you know, half of me wants, wants to just be their best mate and, and you know, just get to know them in, 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 in uh, areas more than music. But at the same time, I can't do that because uh, if it would ruin the, the sort of relationship that we do have, I think. And, you know, there's, we got to just see it as it is and, and realize that there's some really nice people out there and uh, just appreciate where they are in our lives. And, and that for me is weird to get used to because in a normal life, you meet, meet someone and if you get on with them or they get on with you, you just develop the friendship, you know? Whereas in this case, 
I would say there's not one weird fan scenario. It's just the entire existence of fans is weird to me because it's hard to 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 not treat them like a not you know oh, I'm not saying I'm not intentionally treat them like normal friends, but there is a difference and it's hard to get used to that for me. I, still, I don't think I'll ever fully get used to it, to be yeah. honest. I think we'll always try our very best to, to, to make sure that friendship stay, you know, is a friendship. Um, you know, like I say, like a lot of the people that come and watch us on Twitch, they are friends and they'll never be anything other than that. The only thing I know exactly what you mean, Chris, um, it, it's kind of like, that is a weird situation because we can't give what everybody deserves. Yeah. Do you know, we can't give everybody what they deserve, you know, yeah. um, which again, I know we keep talking about it, but that's exactly one of the reasons why we started the whole Patreon thing as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, you know, it's difficult like with me at the minute because I'm a fan, a big fan of yourself. So it's like, Oh, thank you, dude. I think it's lucky Thanks, of the job I'm trying to do with being a journalist. So I have to remain professional and not fan out at the minute, but talking like about that, who, who is the sort of most high profile celebrity you've ever been able to meet or have, have a, a little conversation with? Chris, this is one's probably for you because you've got, um, obviously you work in the industry and um, mm. obviously you've worked with a lot of, of um, you've worked with all time low and, 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 you know, things like that. Yeah. I, I don't know who the, I don't know who the biggest, the biggest person is, you know, in regards to whatever, how everyone sees them. But for me, that's a good one to mention, Sean, all time low I've listened to since I was in, a kid in school. And it was like so weird. The first time I met them, actually, I um, our our old tour manager and photographer Val. Um, she's from Paris, and she um, she's a journalist. Well, she was a photojournalist, so she'd sell her photos to magazines and and sometimes do little interviews, you know. But it's mainly about the photography. But um, she got this interview with Against the Current, um, and they were supporting All Time Low on on a tour, and. She couldn't make it. And she goes, Chris, can you go and do this interview with Against the Current? Bearing in mind, I've had no experience with being a journalist or anything. And um, I said, yeah, uh, okay, what's the question? She goes, oh, you just have to, it, I haven't got time to, to think of them. So can you, can you do it? And so I had to not only go and interview this band, but think of the questions. And I honestly, right, I think I did all right, you know, but what happened was when I was being led into the, dressing rooms by the tour manager the tour manager um messed up and thought i was there to interview all time low so he just took me into the all time low dressing room and was like uh this is chris uh, he's here for the uh, interview and i was like yeah um like half of me <laughs> half of me was like do i continue and make up the questions for all time low or or and and basically i i, I decided I can't do it. So I said, oh, sorry, guy, I'm not, I'm not here to interview you. I'm here to interview against the current, sorry. And they were like, ooh, interview the bigger band. And then uh, uh, anyway, I interviewed against the current and um, that moment they remember because it's quite funny. And uh, when, I, when I actually met, met them again, um, uh, actually that night we, I went out with a couple of the guys in against the current and then Jack from all time low showed up and we went to uproar. Sure. We went to uproar yeah, yeah, I remember, and yeah. and um, so, yeah, I, I got to know him that way. And what was so nice and what blew my mind, you know, not, you know, more so than just saying they're the most famous people or, or whatever, is that the fact that they remembered me so well. And when I, when I, did that tour, I was um, tour managing and mixing a band called Hey Charlie, who did a European leg of the last Young Renegades tour with All Time Low. And when I walked into the dressing room day one, um, Alex and Jack, like, Chris. And I was just like, how, like how? How do you do that? Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm so terrible at names. You're better than me, Sean. Boots, uh, Boots our old singer, was inc insane yeah. at it. Um, he he could meet someone in a in a nightclub while he's wrecked for two minutes and talk about pineapples and then meet meet the same guy twelve years later and go, David, I met you in that nightclub and we talked about pineapples. It's like, how do you do that? But that that more than anything, the, the, their ability to remember who I was and where they met me and how funny that situation was just was amazing and it set set that tour off on a, on a on a good foot. And every time I've seen 
all bumped into them since then, it's been the same story. You know, they, they obviously treat me as a friend now. And I'd say that there's a lot of bands like that in this industry. And it's, and it's something I really want to try and be, you know, mm. even if I can't remember a name, I'll remember a face. And I really try to make that known to people as much as I can. Yes, I've messed up. And yes, I've, I've thought I've met someone and, and they've been like, oh, I haven't met you before or the other way around. <laughs> you know, they've been like, don't you remember me? And I'm like, yeah. But, but actually that happened to me at an MXPX show. Um, I was speaking to the singer of MXPX when I was a fan. I, was, I went to watch them in uh, Institute, uh, was it in, no, Academy 2, the old Academy in Birmingham when I was like 15. And I said, oh, I saw you. And he goes, oh yeah. At, and he said a, total, a show that I wasn't at. And then I went, no, 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 it was, and he goes, oh, with the, and he said another wrong show. And that stuck in my mind. Like he was obviously trying to do what, what what I want to do but he failed and so I don't want to do that either I don't want to overdo it I want to I really want to you know I consider myself to be an all right people person you know but I really want to seeing how um the all-time low guys speak to everybody they meet you know it's really inspirational and uh, and you know I really want to make sure that we are aiming to be that nice and that yeah you know, have that connection with people because I do have that connection. Even if I for forget a name, it's, it's just a memory problem. You know, it's not like I want to forget that. Um, but yeah, that, that's, they're probably the, they, I don't know if they're the most famous people I've met, but they're definitely really stick strongly in my mind as someone integral that I've met. Definitely. Yeah, sure. Uh, before we just talk on your latest signal, uh, single and, new music down the line um i just want to ask you sort of uh, who was your first concert that you've ever been to see um or, or gig it doesn't matter if it's old barry performing at your pub who, who was your your first gig and who would you say your top three concerts that you've been to whoever wants to go first um so for me uh the first show that i ever have a proper show i ever went to was uh to a, go and see a band called in me um, which is our drummer, our drummer Snake uh, was in a band who supported them. And that's partly how I got to know who Snake was, because I, kn I knew that he was a local guy uh, and he was in this band that I absolutely loved. And then he and then he was supporting In Me. So In Me was definitely, um, it was my first ever show. Uh, my brother went to take me to that. Um, and I think the best shows I've ever seen um, and Shikari, absolutely insane. They played um, and they uh, they supported Thirty Seconds to Mars, but and, she, and, and I went to see um, Thirty Seconds to Mars. But Enter Shikari on that that show was insane. I think it it was insane. The floor was moving under your feet, and I was like, "How do you get a crowd to do this?" Um, mm. And then that's a big show, small show, uh, Palisades. Palisades literally m made my jaw hit the ground, um, which we're friends with Palisades. They've come to stay at the at the college where we used to live. Uh, well, well, Chris still lives, I, I used to live. Um, and they, they're exactly the same, really nice guys, uh, but they played a really small show um, supporting Our Last Night. Again, went to see Our Last Night and they absolutely, they absolutely smashed it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my first uh, show that was unintentional was Stereophonics in the Millennium Stadium with um, Feeder supporting an ocean colour scene and never been to a gig before. And my first gig was a stadium show. And because my brother went wanted to go, but he couldn't go in the end. So he gave his two tickets to me and my dad. So it's kind of that situation I was talking about earlier, like I didn't really value that I was going there yeah. until uh, I don't know if you remember that song just a day by feeder right he walked out the obviously there was that whole lights down moment big crowd and it's the first time I felt it and I was in the middle of the floor standing in thousands of people right and it was just and I was like oh my god that's so loud because I've never I've still not been to a football match actually <laughs> I've never <laughs> been to anything like that at all and he just walked up to the mic right just the singer then the other rest of the band weren't even on the stage and he just goes do 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 and then step back and it was just like da, 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 da. i was like oh my god this is so cool um 
So that was, the, and I think Fido were better than Stereo. Stereophonics, not really my thing. They got some bangers, but a lot of it is a bit kind of just like, you know, not easy, easy listening. Um, but the first show I intentionally went to was uh, Yellow Card and New Found Glory um, at the Forum in Kentish Town, London. And, and that was unbelievable because they were uh, New Found Glory were filming a DVD that night as well. And the PA, some, something blew on the PA and they turned the monitor wedges round and they played like three songs acoustic and they had the keyboard as well that came out the monitor speakers. And it was just magical, man. And I, and I remember the, the, my, one of my big goals mixing shows was to mix a show there. And uh, now I've mixed two shows in that room and both times I've just been like, this is unreal. Like it takes me right back to when I was a kid. Uh, the best gig, I can't think of three, but the best one was uh, Green Day, the Bullet in a Bible show in Milton Keynes. Um, unbelievable. That, that guy, he's, he's kind of like a, like a pop punk Freddie Mercury, Billy Joe, man. Like mm -hmm. he, he has everybody in his hands like that stage presence you know on a stage that big he's a tiny guy you know but it, but the presence was huge and i i still haven't uh, felt a stage presence like that live you know in person i i haven't felt uh, something that big since then there's been some amazing shows but nothing's quite topped that yet it's just making me so jealous man because uh, i've only ever been to see the wanted when i was about 10 and I sort of took my mum my skills like last year. And that's like literally the, the amount of people I listened to and it was so easy to go and see. Like I, re I started listening to the Amity Affliction and they uh, oh, yes. formed uh, uh, Rock City in Nottingham. And I was just like, it just it literally 10 minutes down the road from me. And I was like, I could have gone and seen them, but... Uh, them, them, them concerts will come and stuff. But yeah, I feel like I feel like a lot of people are going to feel how you feel when 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 live music comes back. I think it yeah. is going to come back. I don't know if it's all going to come back in one massive surge because of social distancing, and I think it'll be a slow rise. But the rise will rise like way above where it was before. I think gig yeah. attendance is going to be bigger than it ever has been. You know? Yeah, it goes back to what we were saying earlier when we say um, that we're, we're not going to take for granted the things that we have. Yeah. Um, and we've, we've all done that, dude. We've absolutely all done that. There's so many things we all could have done and we're definitely going to do them when, when things calm down. 100%. Um, it's just about concerts again. Is there any dream concerts that you, or concert that is just the cream of the crop that you would just love to go and see? To go and see? Yeah. Mm. Um, then I can't think for myself. I should yeah. ask the question, but to go and see, um, it's hard because I I prefer playing shows to 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 go and to watch them. Um, you get the jealous feeling. You get you? you do yeah you do you get the jealous feeling like um. Okay, we'll change. We'll, we can change the question around. All right, what would be the dream venue for you to play at then? I've already mentioned my venue, definitely Kentish yeah. Town Forum. I, yeah. Like. I was so jealous of the bands I was on tour with getting to walk out on that stage. I don't know what it is about it. You know, it's, it's just, it's another venue, but I, d I don't know why, but I would, I can, you know, you know, when you have your, your, your little vision sessions and you think of, I don't know where we could go with this band. For some reason, my vision is always there on that stage, you know, yeah. definitely that one for me. Um, for me, I, I, it's a lot, a lot, a lot smaller, but um just Academy One in Birmingham. I would absolutely love to play that. Just because I've That'd played, be cool. I've played um, two and I've played three. Um, it's just when I watched Boys Like Girls play Academy Three, and we all got on stage with with the band. We literally raided the stage. It was a secret show, and we raided the stage. And we thought, and I literally turned around and looked at the audience. And obviously, it was a packed out room. It's a small room, but it's a packed out room. Turn around, and I thought, I'd love to see this. And I've seen that and it's amazing. Mm. And then and then we grew and did Academy Two. This was this was in the band before Led by Lanterns. Um and I played Academy Two and it was incredible. Uh so the only one just to tick it off yeah. would be Acad Academy One for me in Birmingham, home Sweet. show. I'd say as well, Jack, Rock City, what you mentioned, yeah. that's high up on my list as well. Something about that place, man. Yeah. Something about it. Actually, I've seen Circle Waves there, but that that's with a 
friend who we won't mention. That got that memory that I, I forget about. So <laughs> okay. we didn't go on too so anyway. We all have them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, latest single. Um, d- just talk us through it. What, um, Sean? What, what what was the reasoning behind that track? Um, sort of delve into the lyrics and, and what what does it mean to you personally? Okay. Um, well, you're gonna like this one. Uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of an odd one. Uh, so all the songs on the album so far have been about um, mental health and some of the struggles that we've had so far. Like personally, um, down was a little bit different. Uh, down, we. Well, I say like I wrote on 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 the Waster tour and um, things were going on at work about a guy who uh, was a little bit cringe to females to girls and uh and i know i know that door swings both ways um but it bothered us and and, and chris knows the guy as well and this guy has ended up getting into a bit of trouble for it and it's kind of some of those lyrics are some of the things that he would say mm-hmm. um and it was just very uncomfortable to um to, to to listen to and when we released the song we genuinely got quite worried because we submitted it for reviews and a lot of people were like we can't relate to the lyrics we can't and we were like shit because we were really excited to to release this song and um so when we when we got the reviews and people were saying they can't relate to the songs and we were like well you can't relate to the songs because to this song sorry because i mean we never said this but because it's about a creep you know and you know I'm as the singer embodying this guy. So it kind of made me look a little bit bad. Um, But that it was kind of like, it was just a little bit of a break to kind of get out of my own mind and try to get in the mind of somebody else, you know? And uh, so that's, that, that's, that's what that that song was about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then for you sort of, what what has the um, reaction to that song been like? Um, I, I know, I've not really looked at numbers or fan fan comments, but what is it? What what has it been like? Um, it's definitely the the quickest, um, yeah. you know, quickest number of streams you have ever had. Um, there was a number of reasons why that happened. You know, um, I feel like we made a great video that looks looks awesome, and also it, um, uh, I sort of. Um, submitted it towards a bunch of Spotify editorial playlists and it got picked up by All New Rock, uh, which is a big playlist. And uh, it stayed on there for the for an entire month. Uh, and it gained us a lot of new listeners and a new followers, uh, new followers. And, and um, you know, it, it's amazing how um, important the curators of these playlists are. They actually, uh, more than... More than radio, more than magazine, I think it's taken over. I think Spotify playlists are now the new radio, the new PR, yeah. the new, you know, and it's something we're learning how to work with, how to manipulate and, and try to get on them, you know, and, and you see, you know, Fair Play to Normandy, they their songs, all the singles have just been on so many playlists. And I know it helps to be on a label, you know, we're going at it alone. We don't have management either. It's like everything we do, we do it ourselves. And I know this industry is about personal relationships. And unfortunately I don't have, and Sean doesn't have relationships with these curators, you know, lab, you know big label reps do. And um, it's, I really appreciate the fact that our, you know, Alive, our song got onto Crash Course playlist. It's still on there. I really, really appreciate that. That's done wonders for us. Um, our cover of Dua Lipa's New Rules, that's got onto um, Pop Goes Punk playlist. Um, that's still on there. And and this latest, our latest single, Down, yeah, smashed it on that song. And, and I think, hopefully, in, in my mind at least, we're starting to build a bit of a rapport with these people who are choosing the songs, and whether it's consciously or subconsciously, you know, they're, you know, in the latest pitch I've done for the upcoming single, which is called Catacombs, by the way, um, I've mentioned in the pitch, like, thank you for already putting our songs on this and this and this, and, you know, in, in, an, in, a, in an attempt to build that relationship, even yeah. though it's just through a screen, you know, uh, I think, the next time when gigs pick up in the next festival season, I'm definitely going to be more active backstage to go and find these people in real life. Cause they're there, they're in the guest areas. I know they are. 
but I don't know who they are. <laughs> and so I, I'm really going to, you know, my job luckily puts me in a position where I am able to, if I'm not running around like a madman working, I, I can try to find these people. And I think um, that's that's my, my sort of mission going forwards, my personal mission, you know, to try and use my career to help us as much as possible, definitely, you know. You obviously mentioned new, new music there. So how soon can we expect that stuff? Uh, so the next single, Catacombs, coming out on March the 5th, which is very soon. Very soon. Yeah. Very yeah. soon. Which yeah. we're excited about. Yeah. Um, I think, to be fair, that perfectly wraps it up. You, you mentioned that sort of a cliffhanger for, for fans who are going to watch. Yeah. So, well, yeah. uh, actually, I'll add to that. It's our heaviest song yet. <laughs> and well, it's going to it's gonna be honestly live. Oh my god! There is a moment in that song, and it's literally that moment is literally written for that live moment, you know. And I cannot wait to play that. So, literally. Well, hopefully I'm there, um, which I'm sure I will be, and we can catch up in that. But yeah, uh, boy. I appreciate you two's time. Um, no, nice. thanks for having us, dudes. Yeah, and if you do come to the shows, let us know uh, before. And if if you can come, we'll we'll sort you out with some guest list. If 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 we even have the power to do that at the time, mm. so yeah, we'll sort you out. That's amazing. Um, All right.